15 year old with leg weakness. This is all metal artifact. They all have orthodontic appliances in, so that's, that's what that is. T1, T2, post contrast. More. Uh, post contrast T1, T2, down the lumbar spine. A lot of stuff to integrate here. So what do you think? VHL, von Hippel Lindau, NF1, NF2, Clippel Trinani Weber, or is it an astrocytoma with leptomeningeal disease? Your answer, please. I really wanted the Hawaii 5-0. I really And you said astrocytoma with leptomeningeal disease. If you looked at this image by itself, yeah, I mean, I guess it's possible, uh, but it's not the answer. So NF2 is what you should be thinking about when you see that case. Uh, only from the pragmatic aspect, if somebody actually has that much of an astrocytoma, they're probably not going to be alive. Um, so you have to think of something that has that extensive a disease, but it's actually moderately benign disease. Uh, multiple intradural extramedullary lesions and a combination of what gives you multiple intramedullary, multiple intradural extramedullary lesions. So we can go through some of these, VHL, NF1, NF2, also all possible. Here's the head scan in this patient, it's NF2 bilateral acoustics, and we won't go back, but it was a corner shot that on the scan there were intracranial lesions as well. So that's maybe the astrocytoma with drop mets is again. So let's talk about NF2. What are true about NF2 except they get cervical ependymomas, they get intradural extramedullary tumors, they get meningiomas, neurofibromas, or no dural ectasia? Which of the following is, so it's kind of like a double negative there, what are the true except? Thank you. So you're saying no dural ectasia uh, is one of the answers or multiple neurofibromas. And the answer, this is NF2, and so there are not neurofibromas in NF2. This is you know, it's just a bad name for the disease and why it, you know, why is it, it's not. It has nothing to do with it. Uh, this is schwannomas, meningiomas, ependymomas. This is no mesodermal dysplasia thing. This is completely separate. Do not confuse it, do not confuse with NF1. Uh, so all these other things are, they don't get dural ectasia, they do get multiple meninge, multiple intradural extramedullary, and they get ependymomas. So the NF2 diagnostic criteria, bilateral schwannomas, NF1 uh, and first degree relatives, and then these, again, really good trivia question, the juvenile posterior subcapsular lenticular opacity is one of the criteria, but as you see, neurofibroma is not on that classification scheme. You know, Cut it off, totally separate from NF1. Another example, very classic pattern for a patient with NF2. Multiple intradural extramedullary lesions that are you know, mixtures of schwannomas and meningiomas. Also multiple lesions studying within the substance of the cord. As you go down, these are little baby ependymomas that are going to take off at some point, but you can see them all the way up and down the, the neural axis. So let's talk about NF2 then. Uh, is it a mutation in tumor suppressor gene causes NF2? Is it located on 22? Is the penetrance less than 70%? Does it code for the Merlin protein, schwannomen? Or is it a loss of wild type allele at the NF2 locus? Which are true except? And I, I found the CAQs this way, you know, you're kind of going along, and it's like a disk space infection, and then all of a sudden, boom, there's a level that is like, where did that come from? And, you know, and you guess. And I, I'm convinced that there was the same question about malignancy in these submandibular something or other, and it was like, that was on there like 12 times, I'm sure, because I, I didn't know it the first time, and I didn't know it the 12th time. So here's the answer. Uh, you're going to say kind of a mixture, penetrance, codes for Merlin, Schwannum. That seems kind of hokey, but it's actually the truth. It's uh, the one is it's a you know very high penetrance. That's that's the take home.